Welcome to The Strack House, a show about inspiring women making change. I'm your host, Sarah Strackhouse. Join us to hear their incredible stories. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. Today we are introducing a badass pilot. <laughs> we are so excited to introduce you to Anish Shapiro. She is a mom to two crazy kids, two doggos, a cat, and she's also the board of directors uh, for Families to Freedom, but she's a CSIP certified pilot, which is kind of hard for me to say. Anise, thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> so what does CSIP mean for those of us who kind of don't know a lot about aviation? I'm a Cirrus standardized instructor pilot. So okay. it's a designation you have to go through extra training and Cirrus is a manufacturer of aircraft oh, and they cool. certify you to be able to instruct with their program. Okay, and I know, so a little bit of background, uh, Anise and I have been, uh, have known each other, oh gosh, I don't know, three years? Yeah, three to four. Ish, to four, yeah. Um, and we first met, I was going to a CG training with Camp Gladiator, a workout, and I remember just seeing this, like, this athletic girl, like, darting across the field and, like, just had, like, all these, like, weights on, had a um, uh, like a chest, a, a no chest, weight, yes, vest. <laughs> a weighted vest. Thank you. Um, and I just see, you know, and she was so like focused and so good. And I was like, oh, that's the girl I need to partner with. You know, she'll kick my butt. <laughs> and because not many women, I walk up to and say, oh, this girl could kick my butt. You know, <laughs> right. so, and I, so I got to give you that respect. And um, since then, you know, since we. Um, so we always found each other yeah. at the, these workouts, and I just knew. I mean, she's an awesome woman, kind, you know, a great mom. Have two awesome kids, um, and just uh, you know, a, a pilot. I mean, how cool is that? How did you? How did you even get into that? I just kind of got lucky. So yeah. back in the day, I remember being a teenager <laughs> and watching 90210 and Shannon Doherty. <laughs> what great. a what like instruction? Yeah. I don't know if it was like two hour flight or whatever. And yeah. I just remember having that feeling of she's so lucky ah. and can afford this. Yeah. Why can't I do something like that? Right. And it just kind of stuck with me forever. And yeah. I kept on finding myself in airplanes. We lived overseas. So we would fly oh, okay. back and forth quite a bit, at least twice a year in Africa. Oh my and gosh. So how long is that flight? It's long. <laughs> um, you have to do two legs. So you go into okay. Frankfurt or Dubai or Stockholm and then continue. So oh my gosh. I don't remember. It's been a while, but yeah. um, I think it can be up to 16 hours. Wow. So you're used to being on a plane. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was very comfortable in the air yeah. for sure because it started when I was very young. Yeah. But during those flights, I, I was very curious and I always found myself near the cockpit and then it was the summer of my freshman year in college. Yeah. I was on an American Eagle flight and again, just found myself near the cockpit and kind of <laughs> peeked my head in and this captain says, hey, come on, sit down. And there was a line, so I'm sure. He's like, ask me anything you want. So I started asking him all these questions about how stuff works and how he flies. And he's like, you seem really interested. You should learn how to fly. And I said, I'm a woman. And he said, okay, well, job quotas, they'll give you my job. And I was like, well, I'm really short. And he said, more room in the cockpit. And I said, I wear contacts I can't, I'm, I can't see perfectly. And he pulls out his glasses and he's <laughs> like, you see better than an old man. Stop making excuses. Wow. And I was like, well, it's really expensive. And he said, don't let money stop you from your dreams. So I came home and I told my dad the whole story. Mm. And my dad knew somebody who got his license. And so he sent me up with a discovery flight. And he told me he'd pay half if I pay half, and I just continued going, and now I get to live the dream. Yeah. Well, so, because, you know, it's funny you bring up, you know, you're, oh, well, I'm a woman, or, oh, well, I'm short, or this or that. You know, like you said, there's always kind of reasons why uh, you can make excuses, but you, you know, bulldozed through and, you know, followed your passion, and now you're making flight, you know, being a pilot possible for other women. Talk about... Yeah. Um, you're being instructor and, and, you know, teaching other women now. I know you have a huge passion for Yeah. It. Well, I definitely teach everybody. Yeah. But I have a thing close to my heart to help the women. A soft because, spot. <laughs> yes. So I was raised very strong, as you kind of said. So I'm very type A and I'm very much a person that felt like I could do anything. Yeah. It wasn't that um, I didn't believe in myself. And so... I meet a lot of women. There's actually only 7% of the whole 
uh, pilot community that are female. So That's crazy. It's nothing. Yeah. And we hear more and more on the air, but still, we're only 7%. So every time I meet a woman that's slightly interested, I want to make them a badass pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Follow in your footsteps. Yes. I love that. So, that's so, so is it really hard to get your license? I mean, what all what is entailed um, in it? Time and money, okay. right, is okay. a large part of sure. it. And there is, it is difficult. It's not just something easy. There's testing that you have to go through. But um, you, you have a big metal tube in the air. Yeah, it's, I'll say exactly. it's a little tough. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. But anyone can do it. Awesome. I, I believe anyone can. I've trained from, you know, 70-something-year-old women to 16-year-old girls. So. Wow. And you have a daughter, and she is just a ball of fun. Right. Like hanging out with her, I'm, I'm like, man, this is just a little adult, just so cute. Like, do you think she's gonna hop in uh, and, and fly? Um, I hope so. Yeah. The thing is, with my kids, they've been raised around airplanes. Right. They kind of look at it as driving, so they yeah. don't aspire like, oh, I can be just like you. But I think she will, and right. she likes coming along. She's very comfortable in an airplane. When I put her at the controls, she's a little uncomfortable, but um, learning. Yeah, she will. Yeah, and I I don't give a lot of choices. Right, <laughs> go. So yeah, you're just gonna do it. Yeah, and if you want to do it professionally, you can, and if you don't, you don't have to. But I love that. Trying to make her find her own dream too. So. Yeah. Well, if someone hears this story and they're inspired. Um, what advice would you give them? Like, have you hit any hurdles where you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this? You know, what what advice would you give them? Well, I think, you know, finding someone you feel comfortable with flying with is the biggest thing. And so doing the research and finding aircraft and an instructor um, can be harder. I'm not saying that women have to fly with women, but we do have fun together. So <laughs> it is a little bit more of a relaxed environment. I mean, it's easy to talk to each other. So... Um, Finding someone you feel comfortable with. I mean, when somebody calls me up, I always tell them, you know, I'd love to be able to help you, but we have to meet. We spend a lot of time together, so you want to make sure you mesh. Um, making sure that their goals are the same as yours. It's easier now to find professional instructors. That was hard uh, a while back. But finding somebody that actually cares about you becoming a pilot, not earning hours towards their future, yeah. um, would be one of the biggest things. And I guess don't let money stop you from your dreams and go after it and try to find something that'll work and stick with it. And you know, if that if that guy hadn't hadn't said what he did to you, um, you know, don't let money stop your dreams. Don't let being a woman stop you. Being short, all these things. What do you think would have happened? Would you be a pilot? I don't know. Um, I was very math based anyway. My mm -hmm. fallback was teaching, just because that's what my mom did. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have wanted to continue teaching. I think teachers are amazing, but yeah. especially with all the homeschool stuff right now, we're all feeling the like, <laughs> I don't know if I fit in this role. Yeah. Um, and I am certified uh, as a math teacher, but um, I hope I would. I feel extremely lucky every time I'm in an airplane, even if it's difficult. Like, you don't always have the perfect situation or the perfect person you're flying with, but then you stop for a second and you just realize what you're experiencing and everything that's around you. So I hope that I'd find my way to the sky. <laughs> I think everything happens the way it's supposed to. So maybe God would have still, um, yeah, kind of pushed me in that direction. So I definitely would have done something where I stood out. I'm not usually one that follows the rules or follows along the path. No. <laughs> in CG, they know uh, I kind of do my own thing. They're yeah. like, don't follow her. <laughs> <laughs> don't do what Anise is doing. Follow us. Anise just like darting across, like getting in the extra sprints. I, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so much respect for you. Um, uh, you know, something you said to me, you know, when we were kind of pre-interview, kind of talking a little bit about this, you were saying that um, when you fly, you feel closer to God. And talk about that feeling, because I, I imagine that is just, you know, seeing the clouds, seeing the sun, seeing whatever it is that when you're, while you're up there, I mean, what's that feeling like? Well, nothing is ever the same, right? Because nature is constantly changing. And so every moment that you're flying, that piece of air, that moment in time is only yours, right? It's through your eyes and you're getting to experience God's glory. I mean, it's unreal to be flying like the birds. I feel completely <laughs> free. Um, I'm part, it's my own, the destination is, how do you say that? Um, 
It's part of the journey. Part of the journey. There you go, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's mine, right? Yeah. So I'm the only one that's taking that path. I'm the only one in that space in the air. I'm the only one seeing that cloud from that one angle. And so I just feel very, very close. And it's incredibly beautiful every time you look out. So. That's so cool. What would you say to those women who are out there, whether it's flying, be, trying to be a pilot, whatever it is, you know, look, look at the camera. What would you say to them if, if they're running into, I'm a woman, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, I'm too short, I'm too, I'm not smart enough. I'm, you know, what would you say to them? You could do anything. Women, women, anybody. I just, you can do anything. Anything anyone else can accomplish, you can accomplish too. Um, it's hard. Things get difficult. I'm not saying through my flying, I've had times where, I have to like take control and say, just do it, right? Um, I've had students, females actually, that I make them put on the dash, just do it. Because a lot of times they're not, they instinctually know what to do, but they don't trust themselves in a sense. And I'm sitting there, so they will rely on me a little bit. And I'm not there to do that. It's for you to take control of your own destiny. And so just do it and take control and Live out your dreams because you can. I love that. And something, you know, um, I feel like pilots always have, you're always adapting. Like you're, like you're saying, you know, when they don't know what to do, they're trying to figure it out. Um, and, but speaking of adapting, um, during the whole coronavirus, you know, in, in shelter, you know, everything that was going on, um, you did something really cool. And I saw it, noticed it on Facebook, actually. Um, it, you were involved in the program Pilots for Pause. Yes. Okay, so tell me what that is. That seems like the cutest thing in the world. Yeah, I'm very, very fortunate to be a part of this. So one of my clients, it's a passion of his as well. And it brings me back to you, actually. When we first <laughs> met, that was one of the reasons I loved Sarah was she's a huge dog person. Freak. And she wants <laughs> you to can own a it. farm with a bunch of dogs. And I remember us running together and thinking, yep. oh, my gosh, we should totally do this. Yep. But um, – <laughs> Same thing. He's very passionate about mm -hmm. animals in general, but there's an organization and we help move dogs from kill shelters mm. to rescues or put them into placement. And so right now with the coronavirus, they had to close all the shelters and so the dogs can't be adopted. So in order to save them, we're getting them to rescue groups because right now a lot of families are... Uh, rescuing animals, and yeah. we also did. I, I was about to well. say, <laughs> yeah, we have a puppy at home, so he's a handful, but so he's cute. a sweetheart. And um, it kind of came about because of this pile of paws. Ella, my daughter, is a part of it as well, and so she helps with the pups and making sure they're comfortable, and she plays with them and everything. But we pick them up mostly from West Texas. Unfortunately, there's a lot of dogs that are abandoned there. It's so, so sad. I, I used to live there, and it was just, you know, I'd be out doing a story, and, and there would just be, you know, packs of these, yeah. um, like, just stray dogs. And it was so sad to see. One of our dogs is from West Texas. He was a rescue there. And, I mean, they just they just know a worse life. So what you're doing, yeah. you're, you know, providing them with an opportunity to have a happy home is just incredible. Yeah, I feel very fortunate. And they're so loving. It's interesting, like, once you're around these animals, yep. you can't believe somebody would leave them without a home because – each one of them, they do nothing but give love. And so it is pretty amazing because these rescue groups are, they're opening up homes and finding you no know, futures for these animals. And yeah. they're living happy lives. And I love the pictures that I get later on. Yep. So very fortunate to be a part of it. And we just volunteer basically. So um, it's volunteer. We pay for the gas, the flight, whatever. And wow. there's pilots all across the nation. And we help each other. We move them from plane to plane. And they get to where they need to be, all the way up to Wisconsin is where most of them go. And <laughs> Really? Yeah, they make a long trek, but it's a great way to get them moving instead of by car. Yeah, so, no, that makes sense. A lot faster. So we get them there one day to Wisconsin. Aww. That's pretty awesome. Well, that's amazing. Um, I have one last question. Um, Kind of a weird question. <laughs> um, so <laughs> be forewarned. Uh, if you need to take a second to think about it, it's okay. Um, and I know you really well, I'd yes. like to think. But if I knew you better, if I, I mean, I grew up with you, I knew you for 20 years, what is a question I would ask you? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's kind of hard. This is a hard one. It's a really hard um, one. I guess 
maybe who is the biggest influence to make you decide to be this person that doesn't let any obstacle stop you? I mean, because I kind of just go, go, go. Um, is it? So the person that would probably push me and encourage me, both my dad and my brother. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that men were the ones that kind of pushed me along, but my dad always gave me every op he gave me every opportunity I possibly could want, um, and always encouraged me. And then my brother was the one that said, "Get up and try again. <laughs> Do not let anything stop you." I mean, he definitely he's my baby brother, but sometimes he tries to act like my older brother. <laughs> you all need um, that. But yeah, we we're very close in age, and so we were kind of raised both of us to push along and do whatever it took. And if I fell off the bike, I mean, my dad was encouraging me to get back on and my brother was yelling at me to get back on. <laughs> so awesome. I mean, they, they definitely got me to where I am. So that's, I think, why I try to help women. Um, I, I'm always telling them when I'm flying with them, especially, you know, you think I do a good job of what I'm doing? You can always be better. Yeah. So safety is so important. Uh, confidence is a part of your safety, and so mm -hmm. trying to make sure that they understand that they're badass women pilots. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Badass women pilots. Title of the show. Yes. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Um, if you, uh, it, it, let's say somehow the man who I influenced you that also said, uh, what, what would you say to him? You make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I could, again, see that person. Um, you changed my life. You gave me everything, right? I love what I do. I feel very, 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 very lucky to be doing what I do. So, <laughs> making me cry. I know. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Well, Anise, thank you so much for for coming on. And um, I know you don't have a website yet. I'm yeah. trying to force She's you to get one. I, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Do it. I'm gonna like sit you down. We can you know, crack open a bottle of wine and we'll yeah, just do it do or it. something. Yeah. Um, but so if you have any questions, you want to find out more about uh, Anise, you can send me a message, sure. um, and I will. I'll get it, and you know, I'll I'll I'm put you guys in contact. Love to help you. So if you want to pursue aviation, it. it it's a weird time, but I promise yes. you things will change, and yeah. it is a great path if you want to do it yeah. as a job or a retirement thing or just for fun because it is like nothing else you'll ever experience. Denise, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week for another awesome episode about a badass woman. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. If you'd like to nominate an inspiring woman, email me at sarahstrackhouse at gmail.com. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.